So as you can see, I was able to use the Loop Cloud Player not only to help me find sounds quickly by the ability to filter my search all the way from instruments to genres to labels and sample packs, all the way down to things in the audio filters here like key, tone, length, stereo width. I can even match the tempo here in my loops. I can look by swung or straight swing. I can change the rhythmic density and the attack and decay time and stuff like that. But also I can audition and repurpose these sounds within the player. And there's not really a lot of plugins that offer that. And this is like one of the things that I love about Loop Cloud. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a boss. Hey, hey, this is Chris Bradley with Produce Like a Boss, where we simplify and demystify music production for the singer songwriter so you can become a self sufficient musician. Today, I'm going to walk you through some of the latest features in Loop Cloud 6. I'm going to show you how to find sounds quickly, how to find sounds that complement each other, and how to repurpose those sounds within the player. Lastly, if you're digging the content on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button, as well as hit the bell to be notified when I drop a new video. Okay, let's jump in. So today, we're going to be talking about Loop Cloud and some of the features that come in the newest version of Loop Cloud, which is Loop Cloud 6. I've actually done a full walkthrough on this plugin before, and if you'd like to see that video, you can go ahead and click here. So one of my favorite things about Loop Cloud is actually the search feature and how easy it is to find whatever instrument or genre or sample pack uh, you're looking for. And you can tell just by clicking up here how easy it is. And as you click on things, it allows you to, uh, to filter by those things. So I can click disco and it's going to pull up a bunch of disco stuff. I can go back into instruments here and say I'm looking for a a kick. So now I've got that I've filtered down that I'm looking for a disco kick, right? And then you can even further your search right here by going, I'm looking for one shots. So now I'm looking for disco kick one shots, or you can go to loops. I'm looking for loops that have a disco kick in them. So just the ability to stack up on your, um, on your search features like that is amazing. But one thing they've done that's really uh, upped the game for me is this little audio filters feature over here, which by the way, if you don't see that, you're just going to click here to access that. And so now not only can you filter down by major and minor keys, but you can actually change the tone of what you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for disco kicks. Um, let's go to one shots. And let's say that um, we want to make sure that, you know, they're living within the low mid and the low range. We're going to filter by um, frequency as well. We can also say we want them to be shorter or longer. I'm going to say I want it to be short and I'm going to say that I want it to be mono because kicks generally are in mono. So it's going to continue to narrow down my feet, my uh, my features here. Um, one step further with a one shot would be that I can even say how fast or how slow I want the uh, the attack. So we'll just kind of leave that right there and how fast or how slow we want the decay. And we'll pull that down as well. So now it's going to, and let's make sure that we're synced to our DAW here and that we have record enabled. So just really quick to recap, and I did go over this in my previous Loop Cloud video, but the way that you want to add the Loop Cloud plugin to your DAW is you want to make sure that you create a new software instrument track and that you select selected the Loop Cloud plugin. Now don't be confused because when you click here, you're not going to be able to access it. You want to then access your desktop app and make sure that record enable is highlighted on that track and then you'll be able to play it through your DAW um, through the player. So let's audition some of these kicks. Now these are giving me kicks based on the search criteria that I've entered. Okay, these have, um, these are one shots, they're kicks, they fall into that disco vibe. And they also match the audio filters over here. So I'm even going to lower this bass and then I'm gonna bring down this low mids and see if it gives me some, some different things to choose from. There we go, now I've got some lower kicks now that I've opened up the frequency zone which I'm searching in. Um, another thing I love about this plugin is the ability to pick out patterns. So not only can you repurpose within the plugin, but you can actually like create a pattern within the plugin without even having to buy the sound. So you're actually really getting to audition how it fits into your track before you purchase it. So let's play with that for a second. Let's lower the pitch first. Right? So you can match the key of your song. But let's take this little uh, loop thing off here and let's go to a pattern. Let's click on kicks and let's go to, oh, let's see. Let's just go to rock and pop and pick rock and pop kick one and see what it gives us. So now it went from taking this kick as a one shot and it's like, here's a pattern. Well, it's like, okay, how do we know if that fits into our track if we're just starting? Well, let's go ahead and put our click on, right? So now the click is on. So now if we were to play this within the DAW, what does that sound like? Boom, 
bum 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 cat boom cat boom cat boom right so i'm like okay i like that i dig that so I've already decided after repurposing it and playing with a pattern that I like it before I even had to buy it. So now I'm gonna purchase this and I'm gonna drag it into my DAW, but notice how right here it says original separate files. I'm gonna go into the, uh, the settings here and make sure that I'm pulling in the current mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in and it should give me that kick pattern. And let's have a listen to that in our DAW. Yeah, and that was a whole lot easier than having to, you know, cut up my audio and move it around or drag it into a sampler and play it. And um, and also it could help if you were having like, you know, beat block or something where you weren't really sure what kind of kick pattern you wanted to come up with. Now it's giving you something um, as a starting point, which is awesome. So now that we've gotten a, a cool kick, let's see what we can find for a snare. In fact, I'm just gonna clear that kick out of the search criteria and I'm gonna put in a snare. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this tone, right? Because my snare is gonna live more in the range of high mids to highs. And I'm going to, I still, I still wanna keep it pretty short. I still want it to be mono. Um, we'll bring this down just a little bit and we can bring this out just a little bit to broaden our search. And let's see um, what else we find. I'm also gonna clear this, uh, this kick from the bottom and um, make sure that I've got my loop cloud highlighted, which I didn't. <laughs> let's see. And, enable that and we'll go back to start auditioning snares okay so i kind of like this snare right here let's have a listen i'm going to pitch it down just a little bit There we go, it feels, a little, it feels a little beefier. It's got like a little more attitude there. I like it there. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the same thing and see what I can find in patterns to give me an idea for snares. So let's go ahead into, we'll go to this rock and pop and let's go to rock snare and see what it gives us. And what's really cool about that is you can see right here on this fourth um, sample that they not only like doubled up the snare to give you, but it gave you a ghost note and it already pulled down the gain on the sample so that the ghost note is quieter than the sample before. So this is just really great because it's taking a lot of the heavy lifting out for you. But let's see how it sounds in context with the track. And let's also go ahead and try some other patterns here just to see what else they got. So I'm feeling like this rock snare pattern number two is a little bit closer to what I had in mind and it's feeling pretty good at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy it and then I'm going to drag this into my DAW. Now, keep in mind, if you wanted to just pull in that singular snare and you didn't want the pattern, no problem. You just go here into the settings and you're gonna choose how you wanna pull it in. Now, it says you can do current mix, you can do original file, you can do the process current track, separate files if you've layered and stuff like that. So let's say that you were inside the plugin and you also added some effects or some other things to it. You can still pull in the original file and you can also pull in the process file. So just keep that in mind. And uh, speaking of effects, that's another thing I wanted to touch on in this video. So the cool thing about the effects within the Loop Cloud Player is that you can add it directly to the sample, once again, before you even purchase it so that you can just really get a, a feel for what the finished sound is gonna be like before you buy it. Um, another thing I really like about these, these presets is that they're actually titled exactly what they're they're going to be doing. So if you want more boost and punch, like let's select that for example, and then they're super simplified. So this is a compressor with two knobs just for the speed and the amount, and you can dial it into taste. And we'll put loop on to audition.
And you can really hear what it's doing as you're cranking the knob. And let it back a little bit to a slower speed. And same thing here, like let's go and pick a reverb. You know, what kind of reverb do we want? Well, let's say we want just a little space. I love that, it's super simple, super intuitive. Once again, only three knobs, really easy to use. And you can really hear exactly what it's doing. And I think that's good for what I'm looking to do. So I'm actually going to, um, let's go ahead and pull this mix in here for this snare. Let's get rid of that other one. And now that I've added a little bit of compression and reverb, I'm gonna pull that one in. And then let's have a listen to what it's doing. So now that we have found our kick and our snare, I think I wanna look for a bass. Um, I went ahead and cleared out everything that I had open, and now I'm just gonna start at the beginning. So let's click on bass, and let's go to genres, and let's look in, let's look in a couple things. I'm gonna put in like some rock, and I'm also gonna put in the, let's see, some disco, and let's just see what it pulls up for us. And make sure that my plugin is enabled here. There we go. And now we're just auditioning sounds. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay. So if we want to hear how this works in context with the drums that we already have, we just have to play it within the plugin. So um, let's first, first I want to mess with it inside of Loop Cloud just a little bit more. I want it a little lower, so I'm going to change the pitch. Let's get a little lower. That feels good. And then let's get inside of our plugin and we can go ahead and push play here. And now we'll push play inside of Loop Cloud. I'm gonna go ahead and pull open the effects tab. And let's add just a little bit of a tone box to this, a dash of fuzz. And then let's also add a little bit of compression. And then let's buy that and pull it into our DAW. So now we have this bass line to go with our kick and our snare. Let's listen to the bass line first and see what it sounds like by itself. Dig it. Let's listen to it with the kick and snare. Yeah, I'm not mad at that at all. That's pretty cool. So let's get back into the plugin. So now that we have a groove and a vibe going with this bass, let's go ahead and test out this AI feature of matching either harmonically or rhythmically. Um, I'm thinking that it's probably gonna be best to look for something that matches rhythmically. So this is the sample that we're using right now. Let's go ahead and click here and try to find some rhythmic matches and see what it comes up with. Yeah, I like it. 
cool. So I'm actually going to get rid of this original base sample and we'll just be listening to the new samples that we're looking for. I kind of feel in this tambourine here. So let's have a listen within the DAW before we get it. Yeah, that works for me. So I'm gonna buy that and then I'm gonna drag it in. And now we can listen to our tambourine along with our drums and our bass. Awesome, so now we have a bass, we have a kick, we have a snare, we have a little bit of tambourine. Let's have a listen to what we have and decide what else we wanna add in our layers here. I'm thinking a little like funky wicka wicka guitar could be really cool in this. Bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Bum. All right, so let's look for some guitar and I'm just gonna go ahead and type up here, guitar, I'm gonna type mm. funk too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and utilize these audio filters. Let's say that the tone is gonna be between like kind of like the high mids and the highs. And for stereo width, we'll just, we'll make it a little wider. And we also want to, let's see, we don't really want something simple. I think we want something a little more complex if we're going for like, boom, tick -tick -boom, you know, kind of like wicka wicka. <laughs> we'll go ahead and increase the complexity there. And then let's just see what this feeds uh, to us. So that almost feels like it might be exactly the pattern I'm looking for, but I don't know if we'll be able to make that match key wise. Just wanted to get that in my head real quick. So let's listen to this again. I don't know about that ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, that other step up, but let's listen and see if it fits together. Once again, so great that I can audition this without having to buy it first. You know, I'm gonna try something here. It's so close that I'm actually gonna buy it and see if I can tweak it. So let's go buy, and then let's just pull that into the DAW. We'll go ahead and mute up there, and let's see what we can do here. And then let's see if we can get this to do something else. And I'm gonna go ahead and just transpose this down a little bit. So what I'm wanting to hear is this. I'm wanting to hear Let's see if that worked. Yeah, so within the plugin, I was able to change the pitch automatically. I was able to match it to the BPM without having to repurpose it inside of my DAW. I was able to audition it along with my other parts before I made the commitment of purchasing it. And then once I purchased, purchased it and pulled it into my DAW, I was able to repurpose it further. So as you can see, I was able to use the Loop Cloud Player not only to help me find sounds quickly by the ability to filter my search all the way from instruments to genres to labels and sample packs, all the way down to things in the audio filters here like key, tone, length, stereo width. I can even match the tempo here in my loops. I can look by swung or straight swing. I can change the rhythmic density and the attack and decay time and stuff like that. But also I can audition and repurpose these sounds within the player. And there's not really a lot of plugins that offer that. And this is like one of the things that I love about Loop Cloud. So let's have a listen to all these elements that I put together. By the way, rock and funk is not really my genre. <laughs> I was just kind of like grabbing samples as they came to me. So this isn't a complete track or anything. It's more of an idea, but just wanted to show you how I layered all of these sounds. And we can start with the kick, which we actually picked the pattern through Loop Cloud's player, right? And then it also picked this pattern as well for the snare. Then we were able to find this bass line that matched this kick and snare. 
Then we added a little bit of tambourine. And we were able to find that tambourine by searching for rhythmic sounds that were similar to the bass. And that was one of the AI features. And then we just kind of did a free search for a guitar and we came up with this. So let's do a quick recap of the Loop Cloud plugin. So this is your home screen right here. This is your library. And this is where all the samples that you have purchased actually live. And you can just click here to unpack them and pull them into your session. Over here on the right is where your audio filters live. And you can click that on and off by clicking this button here. The audio filters are gonna allow you to search by key, um, tone, length, stereo width, BPM, uh, you know how swung your track is, what the rhythmic density is. You can adjust your one shots um, by attack and decay right over here. Um, there's also the suggestions button, which I really like. There's some really cool tutorials in here and some popular sample packs as well. Up here, you have a search bar where you can type anything from um, a genre to an instrument, but you can also search by instruments and genres and labels up here as well. And if we look here at the bottom of the plugin, you you can actually uh, select your BPM here. You can go half time or double time here. You can change the pitch. You can get into different patterns, which is really cool. Let's say you pick like a one shot bass, then you can go here and have it pick out different patterns for you. So definitely something to play with. Also, you can choose your effects by hitting the effects edit button and then add them accordingly. And once again, all the effects kind of say exactly what they do, which is super cool. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Loop Cloud version six. I wanna thank Loop Masters for reaching out and sponsoring this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. And I will see you next week with a new tutorial. Do it like a, like a, like a boss. Like a, like a boss. Do it like a, like a, 